My name is Ashley Yang. I'm currently a social studies teacher in Webster School District. This is my eighth year teaching. Um, I teach AP Psychology and Global Studies. Uh, this is my first year teaching AP Psychology, but I've been teaching some iteration of psychology for about four years at this point. Um, and my seventh year teaching Global Studies 10. My name is Brian Dastic. I am uh, a Spanish teacher by trade. I'm currently the Dean of Students at Sotus Junior Senior High School, working with grades seven through 12. My name is Jordan St. Andre. Um, I am a incoming junior and I am a theater major at SUNY Geneseo. Uh, I'm Colin Huber. I'm a fourth year PhD student in the math modeling program. I did my undergraduate uh, in chemical engineering at RIT. I'm doing my PhD at RIT as well. Um, how, how far back? Um, I think that's good. That time? I would define social media as um, any application or website used to connect people to one another. A conglomerate of uh, platforms that allow people to connect with each other in a way that would resemble uh, text messaging, uh, but f has a capability of going far beyond that. Platforms or sites that allow people to share publicly beliefs, views, or information about their life um, to other people, and and at the same time, those people can receive notifications on that person's in posts. Uh, like things like Twitter, Facebook, ways that you interact with large groups of people over, over some electronic device um, rather than something in person or uh, not in person the way things were in the before times. Let's do this. Social media one of the most important facets of the interactive web. Oxford's Dictionary defines social media as websites and applications that enable users to create and share content or to participate in social networking. During my time as a student at Rochester Institute of Technology, as both a former game design major and as a digital humanities major, there have been quite a few times where the classes I've taken have overlapped in what they've taught me. One thing that I've heard in almost all of my classes is the term technological determinism. Technological determinism is the theory that technologies influence the cultural values and structures societies create and develop. This theory was developed by Thorstein Veblen in the mid to late 1800s. For an example of his theory, I want to turn to the phonograph. When the phonograph was originally created, it produced all sorts of different musical styles that hadn't been exposed to the general public. Mamie Smith's Crazy Blues was a hit that solidified blues as a musical genre, all thanks to the phonograph. Soon after came jazz and even hillbilly music. Technological determinism would also look at how the phonograph had phased out some instruments. Sopranos and violins were usually being played at a higher frequency than what could be recorded on the phonograph. As a result of this, many of these instruments slash vocalists were replaced with alt altos who could just sing a little bit higher, and flutes. The same thing happened on the opposite end with the double bass, which was phased out by the tuba. In addition to this, you also had to deal with performers, and performers would often have to go through the process of learning how to do a clean single take. No longer were you performing in a live audience where if you miss a note or you say something wrong, it can easily be forgiven because you're in that heat of the moment. Now you're recording this onto a phonograph where people are going to bring it home and people are going to be able to listen to it on repeat. So perfection had become the standard. Now you might be thinking, this just sounds like you're describing the history of the phonograph. Which is true, technological determinism focuses more on how you're presenting the information rather than what you're presenting. You also might be wondering what this has to do at all with social media and stress. But don't worry, I'll bring this back up later. But for right now, I wanted to talk about the benefits that social media brings. Social 
social media has allowed me to share, you know, memories with people I went to college with who now live on the opposite coast. I was recently in my good friend's wedding in Seattle. I have not seen her face to face since we graduated in 2011. But when I flew out there to be in her wedding in 2019, it felt like we hadn't really been apart because we communicate a lot over social media. As far as uh, in a personal level, I think that it has changed a little bit in that, you know, people just have greater access to each other now than they ever have. Uh, You know, they don't necessarily have to send each other a letter in the mail anymore. They can uh, do a video chat. There is, you know, whether it's text messaging or using a platform like Zoom or, or what have you, um, there, are, there is a lot faster and more efficient access to other people. Really more for staying in touch with people. Like um, for, uh, for example, uh, events being scheduled uh, and RSVPing via Facebook um, or using the Facebook Messenger instead of texting before I had social media, I don't think I had as many friendships. Uh, I wasn't necessarily bullied, but I wasn't exactly the popular kid either. Um, and then once I had social media, I had I had a lot more friends because I had a lot more access to talking to people. As you can see, there are a lot of similarities between the responses that I got. The ability to put yourself out there and promote yourself and your brand and to connect with old friends and forge friendships with new ones. All of these are very important benefits that social media brings. I'm going to keep this part pretty succinct because, as you may have noticed by the title of this video, my focus is more on the negatives, the stress that social media brings. However, please don't take my lack of coverage to mean these benefits are not important because they very much are. And they're demanding. And we clean them up with technology. And when we do, one of the... This was a TED Talk by Sherry Turkle in 2012. In this talk, she discusses how we present ourselves online using our devices and how that is changing and how we're viewing connection and performing communication is also something that is constantly evolving. I was caught off guard when Stephen Colbert asked me a profound question. Don't all those little tweets Don't all those little sips of online communication add up to one big gulp of real conversation? My answer was no, they don't add up. Connecting in sips may work for gathering discrete bits of information, but they don't really work for learning about each other for really coming to know and understand each other. Voice, video, and text communication are nowhere near as fulfilling as face-to-face communication because there are constant gaps and room for misinterpretation when you're talking with someone over text or you're talking with them over voice because you're losing the visual aspect. The closest one currently is video, but even then, you're still not able to physically interact with the person. A friendship through text message is mostly just like jokes because you can't really convey like anger, sadness, all these different things without being blunt and saying, I'm angry, I'm sad directly through text message. You don't don't get all of the uh, niche little things that come with a face-to-face conversation. Although she notes that people are constantly trying to trick themselves into believing that text communication and the others are just as fulfilling as face-to-face. Human relationships are rich and they're messy and they're demanding. And we clean them up with technology. We sacrifice conversation for mere connection. We shortchange ourselves. And over time, we seem to forget this or we seem to stop caring. Social media is unsatiatingly demanding. You're always expected to be online and active. Students never get a break. Um, And we know that, you know, from from a psych perspective, that constantly checking your phone and seeing an interaction, seeing a like, seeing a retweet, it actually gives your brain a little hit of dopamine, which is the reward chemical. And I have had students who I genuinely believe experienced addictive behavior to their phones. 
where I would say, hey, I need you to put your phone away. And they would say, okay, and, and put the phone away. And then less than five minutes later, it's out again. And they weren't trying to be disrespectful. It's like they didn't realize they took it out. And I would say, put your phone away. What did I just tell you? And they go, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize. Things that were normally done at work or at school can now be carried over back home with you. Bullies, drama, rumors. It can be very difficult to escape from such things. Um, I, have, I have not seen a lot of instances of social media bullying. I know it happens. I yeah. absolutely know. Um, I just think that it, sometimes that's not something as a teacher I'm aware of. You know, the bullying pieces, right? You know, because if you think about bullying back in the day prior to, to social media, bullying would happen maybe on the way to school, on the way home from school, possibly at school, depending on what the context is. Um, but once somebody was home, they were away from it. You know, now you can't escape it. It's like an, like an immersion in it. And that can make the trauma of something like that so much worse because a lot of people feel like there's absolutely no escape. And that can create a very potentially dangerous situation emotionally. However, this doesn't just mean that bullying happens with children or with adults and with people that they know. Racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, di discrimination of all kinds are all things that are ever present in our digital society, especially over gaming platforms. And it's very pervasive because anywhere on the internet, you can hide behind the barrier of anonymity. Sensitive images shared between, you know, couples that then get shared if they break up, like that's been a big issue. Um, I know there have been instances, not so much now, but like of catfishing, um, you know, someone making up an alternate name and then blurring out sensitive information from another person. And you're at the mercy of moderators or people who are in power to do something about it, which may not always be available or may not always be there to immediately knock these things out of the current space. The stresses of social media impact everybody. As I chatted with my interviewees, they all got to tell me some personal things that they have to contend with while on social media. I don't necessarily think it's added stress to me. What it does is it makes me consider the optics of any situation very, very quickly. Uh, it makes you operate in a way where you have to, at least subconsciously, if not very consciously, um, operate under the most professional circumstances that you possibly can because you never know when something could come back to bite you. Um, but then with that, it's also changed my life because I'm a lot more self-conscious now than I used to be. I'm a lot more, I have a lot lower self-esteem because people can very easily like show the good things going on in their life but never show the bad on social media. Yeah. So when all you expose yourself to is the good things other people are doing, it makes the bad things in your life, like, hit a lot harder, I guess. Yeah. So, and, and you know, it's changed my life to make me, it, it's made me more self-conscious and more lower self-esteem. Uh, you know, sometimes I feel really bad about my life and things that are going on in my life. I have definitely gotten into comment wars with people who I don't know, who I have no vested interest in knowing, but they said something that I thought was wrong and I felt the need to correct them. And then it really escalates generally on a news site about something current events. Cause that's kind of like my thing. Um, and, and it's a waste of time. What's the purpose? It riles me up and it makes me feel bad and there's no purpose to it. I, I guess the, the stress that I get from Facebook is more of the, the doom scrolling stress. As you can see, social media brings with it a lot of problems and a lot of unneeded stress. But there's still this underlying addiction that keeps us from leaving, keeps us coming back for more. Are we destined to just become servants to this addictive conglomerate? Well, let's go back to Turkle. Over and over I hear, I would rather text than talk. And what I'm seeing is that people get so used to being shortchanged out of real conversation, so used to getting by with less, that they become almost willing to dispense with people altogether. 
as I mentioned before, this video was produced in 2012, long before the COVID-19 pandemic where our lives have been uprooted and we've since been forced to interact in a virtual space for over a year. This has been a world-altering event in our history, and while I still believe Turkle's points are relevant, I did come across a very interesting antidote from my high school psychology teacher. So overall this year, I have found students to be much less likely to be on their phones in class. And I, I made some comments like, you know, phones aren't really a big problem this year, and I appreciate that, but I'm wondering why. And they said, we're so tired of our phones. We're on our, we were on our phones all through quarantine and we're on our phones three days a week when we're not in school. We're kind of like sick of our phones and we kind of want to be in school. And I was like, cool. <laughs> um, so that's kind of neat. Well, I don't think this refutes any of the points mentioned before. I do think there is validity in looking into other sources about how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected our attitudes towards social media. A survey in October of 2020 said that social media fatigue increased 41% in the last 10 months during the outbreak, with following studies showing a peak in January of people who wanted to quit social media. According to a study done by uh, Statista, 45% of Facebook users, 34% of Snapchat users, 32% of Twitter users, and 22% of Instagram users had considered deleting the platform at some point. Needless to say, a lot of people are getting sick of social media and constantly being on it. Perhaps society as a whole won't ever get to a point where social media is our primary way of communicating with everyone. And even then, this isn't including people who aren't deleting social media, but are just taking a break from it. Now I wanna get back to that term I was talking about before, technological determinism. I didn't mention it before, but I actually have an issue with this theory. Digital humanities, as you may have guessed by the name, focuses on both technology and culture, or the humanities. I didn't call it into attention in my example, but technological determinism puts all the agency into the technology itself. The phonograph was responsible for the change in band compositions. The phonograph caused the creation of jazz and blues. The phonograph made performers have to focus on getting clean takes. It's a reductionist theory, and it's a very simplistic view of the history of a technology. You're ignoring so many important sociological aspects that went into the object's creation and its further adaptions. Technological historians find it far more interesting to focus on the culture and the people who are behind such inventions. We focus on society and how it uses technology to shape its own needs. How does this connect back to social media? Well. I've been very deliberately taking a very technologically deterministic view of social media. I don't want to put, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it, it definitely sounds more like the issue isn't with social media in and of itself, it's with the culture surrounding social media. It's, it's societal standards that have caused us to draw problems out of social media. Problems that aren't inherent to social media, but inherent to the people consuming the social media. Yeah. A lot of the issues that people bring up with social media, a lot of the stress that unfolds because of it, is ultimately one that is because of how we're using it. Social media is ultimately just a tool that can be used for benefit or for harm. In short, social media doesn't need to change. Our culture does. Thank you for watching.